evening, RPG Limit Break, and welcome to day two of the quarterfinals. Wow, we're at the quarterfinals already, the Adamant Cup here. And I I've been telling, oh, it's a, it's a free enterprise Sunday. See, we were talking about pizza, and I was totally, like, expecting a pizza here. <laughs> We've just got a lot of Sunday toppings here. But anyway, I'm Night Do. With me here is Invenerable. Uh, we're for here for game one of Curios and Simbu. How you doing tonight, Inven? Ah, uh, pretty good. Looking forward to this matchup. Uh, of course, Simbu, one of the old hands at Free Enterprise, but Kyrgios, new name on the scene, in the tourney scene, and has torn through his bracket, not dropping a match yet. Uh, so excited to see this kind of contest of new blood and old blood tonight. Ought to be a pretty good matchup. Absolutely, and uh, we were talking about a few things here, and... Uh... And, and I'm definitely going to look at uh, objectives four and five today here. We've got uh, the king and the queen slot here in some uh, hopefully very rude spots here. And yes, we do see objective seven there, just kind of just kind of skulk down there. Giant required two, so definitely a lot of uh, definitely a lot of high-profile boss slots being uh, required here tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, a few terminal objectives as well, noting that all the ones that require key items here, Package, Sand Ruby, Pink Tail Turn Them, none of those gate anything else. So uh, frequently with these objectives, it's nice when you have a complete the Tower of Zod, destroy the Super Cannon, because it'll guide you frequently to something that then may gate something else in turn. All these are terminal, so the steps you take to get to those uh, will be a lot trickier to follow tonight, I think. Uh, yeah, I was I was looking at that. I'm seeing our starting character is a young, and I'm thinking, I'm like, what do I really want to see as boss slots in the Fame Arch? And, I'm, and my like head like went straight to like Dark Knight Cecil, but I'm looking at that edge, and I'm like, ah, he might make that just a little bit too easy here for that young. Oh. oh yeah, the uh, of course, especially that DKC at the Leviathan spot, hitting for up to three thirteen oh five one thousand three hundred five damage a spot. Young would. Definitely be the dream there, because early game, he's not really going to give us a lot of damage. Uh, big ol' pull of HP, and definitely scales up towards the end game. But that mid game, you really want to find a way to leverage that HP pull, if we even keep him around to start with, of course. Yeah, true. I mean, I'm a little bit more, especially um, he has been called a punch mage for a reason here. If you can find him some good elemental claws. Uh, cat claws are a little uh, more rare to find, although you can find them in shops. And hey, he's cheaper than Edge here, where, you know, two cat claws are still cheaper than one ninja blade. True, true. The, uh, uh, but we are off to the races here. We have that Yang start. Let's see the partner. The starting key item, and who's waiting for us at the Bygan spot later? We've got plenty of hit points with that Tela here. Um, some guards and uh, and uh, Drain Spear hype right now. No edge to throw that Drain Spear, but uh, well, one dart deposited straight to our inventory here. <laughs> yeah, so a very low-powered start here. Uh, Tela does have the situational use early game of having exit, so that can motivate our runners to loot some places they might not otherwise. Uh, but definitely going to be looking forward to getting through ordeals and giving him his full spell sweep to really get the utility out of the old man. Yeah, absolutely. Looking for either a uh, higher power recruit here or some higher power J items as we see some immediate divergence here. Kyrgios going to Castle Eblen. Simbu, and with that Tela into, gonna take a peek here at the Watery Pass, looking for a few things. Samurai Arrows, not a bad start there. Power Staff actually means Tela will be better offense than Yang for the first few fights to boot. Yep, uh, found, finding a few other items here. Depends on what Kyrgios finds in terms of the monster chests here. Um, yeah, that's a ninja hat. That's nice find, too. Well, in the Blizzard Sphere, I think really the big value there for Kyrgios. Now, if there is a cane on Mount Hobbs, uh, your party's ready to start rolling. Get get knocking over the Underworld, cane with the Blizzard Spear. That You don't need a whole lot more than that in the early game. True. Simbu did actually pick up uh, what I would be looking for here uh, on a low power start here. Did find a Stardust J item there. Did find something you can just kind of throw for up to roughly about 700 damage if it doesn't low roll on you, but uh, can chip away at most of a uh, most of Mount Hobbs' boss health where you can just kind of get around with a little bit more here. But yeah, J items is definitely one of the things I want to see here. 
Yeah. And Simbu is definitely taking advantage of that Tella. We are not stopping. We are going all the way to the end of the watery pass. Uh, this is not something you want to do without a source of exit. Uh, the walk back for the loot value, probably not worth it. But, you know, you have exit. Yeah. Get what you can. I uh, did find that Fire Claw, and actually, since Yang is not guaranteed to start with that Fire Claw there, that could be a good pickup, especially if we find something like D-Lunars, uh, Mylon, something that that Fire, uh, fire Claw could actually uh, tag a weakness on there. Yeah, with the C-Necky flag, uh, Yang can start with uh, Fire, Ice, Thunder, Poison, or Charm, and of course the Charm Fall, everyone's least favorite because of its severe lack of accuracy. Uh, so, having literally anything else you can put on him to contribute is pretty nice. Uh, and we did see a sork ro sorcerer robe there as well. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of gear for any white or black mage. So, uh, tell us a little happy, but we still don't have a lot of damage output yet. I did miss part of Kyrios' uh, loot here. Um, like I said, did see the ninja hat. Not sure I really saw much else of value as Simu is, uh, Marching right into Kaipo there, does see a copy of the Fire Claw there. Uh, unfortunately for them, Fire Claw is uh, usually a little bit uh, cheap here. Gonna check the bed here. Going to see a Vanilla Rosa in the Kaipo bed here. And of course, we will be coming back here eventually. That second objective is Cure the Fever with the Sand Ruby. So Simbu now knows, uh, if he wants that Rosa, knows to save some particular gear for her, uh, or can start to think, well, how much am I really going to invest in a Porum if I'm getting a Rosa eventually anyway? Well, the Star Veils over there in the Kaipo item shop kind of tucked away, uh, especially in this set where you could find up to five, but sometimes only start with two Star Veils. Uh, uh, definitely not a great thing. Uh, we did see Bedward also handed over yet another pack of Samurai Arrows, so uh, no key items yet as uh, Kyrios is availing himself to the public treasury. But unfortunately here, uh, Poison Claw, that's at least something for Yong, but uh, again, just really not really much quality here for uh, either of our runners uh, starting out here. Well, a big part of that, of course, is just having the team that can't use anything. <laughs> Yang being, of course, Claws only, uh, Tella, okay, there we go. That is a Gungnir. We have a Gungnir on one side and an, a Blizzard Spear on the other. Both these runners are now just thinking, please let there be Kane on Hobbs. Let me not, you know, struggle my way through this entire early game. Speaking of things I like to find in one of the uh, Troyo item shops there, um, one of the things I definitely, uh, in a race, especially with Martin Broadcloak just last uh, round there, um, running out of light potions is definitely a thing sometimes here with the... Uh, with some of the subs we have. So finding life potions early, grabbing a quick 20 there, uh, finding charm plots for sale, unfortunately. Uh, not really interested in those. Yeah. And Curios did dump his Blizzard Spear. Also has a Rune Axe here. Uh, worse accuracy, but it does have that bonus damage versus mage types, which has been absolutely invaluable to so many racers this tournament. Uh, and plus it's a weapon that either Sid or Kane can use. So he has a little more leeway for whoever the Hobbs character is. Uh, but going to the basement here means he's going to pick up that gun here as well and be in really great shape if it's either Sid or Cam. Yep, and it's going to be the first one in the Hobbs to check our first character and first boss here. Uh, momentarily, at least. Um, and we get a... <laughs> that's, that's not womp. a tribute. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> uh, you know, if we had a... If we had a dancing dagger... I think we would still take that Edward, just because he is the best source of damage right now. But uh, if he doesn't start with one, that Leviathan fight is going to be very slow. And honestly, I don't think you get through it without burning some Star Veils with how much the Ice 2s do at that spot. Uh, honestly, even if I had something like an Elven Bow to go along with those Samurai Arrows, he might be maybe worth it but yeah you're right we just don't really i mean yeah e even with the uh even with the lilith rod sorcerer rope tella does have a spicy plus 10 to the black magic stat here but uh just just really not enough to justify going after those we do get a lunar sparkle here in the bottom of antlion cave just a pale dim which uh, <laughs> again <sighs> this party doesn't like here yeah, the uh, advantage Curious once he gets down to this fight, he does have a Poison Claw, which is non-elemental, means Yang will be able to do something here. And Simbu here apparently putting that Power Staff to work. Uh, again, Tella here I think is going to be doing more damage than Yang, sadly. 
mean, I mean, the silver lining here is there's just not that much uh, physical po attack power here for Pale Dim, which uh, pretty much just punches and counters with slow so long as uh, we don't cast that elemental magic on him there. But uh, other than that, uh, just it's going to be a slow bonk here as Curios also decides to reset out. Uh, Leviathan, no thanks. We have no need of your bard here. Yeah. And I will note, Tella is out damaging Yang, except for Power Punch making up for what would have been <laughs> reduced damage on Pale Dim. But we do get our first key item of the seed. That's a tower key. I am so suspicious of early tower keys these days, I do. A little suspicious, but um, to be otherwise fair, I'm suspicious of early tower keys. But I am thankful for early tower keys, as I am definitely on Team Fade Keyless Tower. Ah, uh, no, you see, I am all about Keyless Tower. I think Lower Babel only has value if you go there without a key. I've, I've, I've been convinced watching match after match this tournament. Uh, say hello to my good friend, Confirmation Bias. I know him well. He is... Uh... Uh, he is definitely there. Un unfortunately, he has also uh, shown his ugly head most of the time when I fade Keyless Tower, and there's something there. I've seen that happen more than a few times as well. And we do see the advantage of having that non-elemental poison claw here. Kyrgios is doing uh, roughly twice as much damage per power punch as uh, Simbu was, but really Tella not really able to contribute this time, sadly. Yeah, not burning that stardust. I actually never did find that stardust, now that I think about it. So it doesn't have the stardust to burn, as I believe that was deep in the watery pass there. Yeah. So we have a team with no damage, no J items, uh, ugh. No, no key items that opened anything up yet. Pretty gross start. Well I mean, rolled by our restreamer. Yeah, I mean, I'm normally a fan of uh, Team Fade uh, Fabul when uh, applicable here, but part of me says I, I kind of want to go there for the uh, for the XP right now. And uh, actually, what I saw Simbu had in an item shop there, and maybe selling the farm for were vampires. So Simbu might be thinking, hey, maybe this is what I need to get through the early part of this seed. Let's just throw vampires at our problem. Oh yeah, 100%. One of the strongest uh, strongest single target J items you can get uh, and available in ungated shops. So the uh, going to be real handy for him. Going to do far more damage than either this Sage or this Monk can currently do. For some damage, we've got a Palum there and a wonderful place to find a turtle. 400 HP. Uh, uh, so 4% of that, yeah, okay. This wave is not a concern if it even gets it off. The Curious doesn't really have a huge amount of damage here, so uh, again, not worried about the wave that's going to be coming out here. Little worried about what comes after the wave here. Yeah, you really got to just be hoping for a freebie here, something this team can cheese, something that Blink will get you through. Uh, or even just, you know, a complete and utter freebie along the lines of King Queen Eblen. Well, the uh, the dream of Evil Wall down at uh, out at the uh, King slot is dead, as unfortunately it is at the Fabul defense here. But these vampires paying off immediately. 500 a pop. It will take four of those to get through here unless we see a really big high roll. But it's still just... It's a far better option than beating this thing up, you know, 100 HP at a time. And we do see the mirror match here, Yang versus uh, Yang here. Blink will help, but unfortunately, Yang takes that 640 point hit, and uh, uh, that kind of feels like a comeback later here. No Palom for our teams yet, as uh, the vampires do finish off the evil wall here. So let's see what Simbu nabs from the bull defense here. And Kyrgios did go shopping in Troya, so I wonder if he just didn't want to invest the money in the vampires for now, or uh, or what motivated not getting them. But Simbu getting a Darkness Crystal, and I think more relevantly, an Hourglass 2. Uh, pick your favorite trap chests. You can, you can go YOLO some loot now if you want to. I definitely like uh, par partially the play there. Um, 
Now, if we find something like an edge up on the moon here, there's a chest full of hair dryers up there that you probably can survive one round with if everybody's in the back row. Gonna, gonna be a little slow to take down, but uh, the prize could be very well worth, especially that large pile of XP that comes along with. Yeah, a lot, I think, is going to be determined by who the Moon character is and what the Hummingway shop on the Moon is selling. Uh, plenty of options there can just really help this team start to get its legs, because right now, uh, it still doesn't have <laughs> much of anything going for it. Nah, all here, as uh, Kyrgios does get into the fight here, I guess uh, that's a power punch for 183 here. Um, now, uh, we'll probably get there just... Uh, just because Evil Wall isn't going to really uh, swing for that much, it's just looking for it. does have a Boreas to throw. That's going to at least speed it up a little bit there. And of course, making great use of that Blink spell, probably the strongest, probably the strongest white magic spell in the game. You know, just completely negating any two physical punches. One of the best things on a starting Tella before you get up ordeals. Yeah, um, but basically the best thing for Tella going uh, straight up here, it's it's between that and at least Berserk here, just because Berserk does a little bit of the same, just not as much as you think, just by the less uh, the less things that the op opponent can do because they are already dead. Well, but we are also seeing one flaw of Tella's relatively low Viger stat that. Uh... Calcification, uh, gradual petrification, whichever term you want to use for it, uh, advancing on its own from just the single Boreas use, didn't even uh, use another magical item and still nearly got fully grayed over. Yep, and I haven't been counting damage. Young should still get through here, hopefully. Yeah, it's real close, uh, but I think he's going to be fine. I can always throw one of those starting cure twos if you really need to. And there it goes, just as Simbu gets to the moon, we do see our moon character, which is... which is uh, not exactly a uh, jump in the damage field, as that's Porum. Well, we did get those samurai arrows. Curios has two stacks, Simbu just has the one from Bedward. Uh, I, I, at this point, I would be very desperately looking for any plus strength gear to put on that child, because uh, with those arrows and, you know, an archer, or an elven bow, a black belt key, or if you're real lucky, a heroine robe, she's going to be your DPS at this point. This is a true statement. It is slightly, and I do mean slightly more, than what we have on offer right now. And we got a Hummingway shop. That's... I mean, I love to see both sirens and silkwebs. Those are very nice things to have, but uh... and tents are also not to be undersold here. The uh, the fact that I, so many moon dives, because you know, no one wants to go to every single overworld shop scouring for camping supplies. So we've seen a lot of seeds this tourney where you're at the bottom of the moon, you're really trying to micromanage your last doses of resources just to keep from a. Uh, you know, running out of MP and HP before you clear the full Lunar Subterranean. Uh, true, uh, so we're just kind of really hoping, I guess, that uh, the severe amounts of rudeness are not on Mount Ordeals here, as I do believe that kind of feels like our our logical play, I guess, here. Yeah, I think the uh, another really good idea here would be to take those Sirens, to take that Fire Claw, and hey, these Cure 2s even, uh, Third and fourth floor of Mount Ordeals does let you siren a double Lilith fight, which is basically the best XP to cheesable, easy, not difficult fight ratio in the overworld. Uh, so I, that may be just what you have to do to get the starting power going. Yeah, uh, again, another very edge-centric shop there over in Missidia. Longswords and Mute Knives there, both incredibly good for our ninjas should he show up. Simbu flying over to Baron. Now, I will note that Simbu sold that Gungnir Spear on the moon, needed the cash more than he was looking forward to a cane. I guess he'll breathe a sigh of relief when he sees that this character is Palum. Uh, but you know, we have a Tella, we have a Yong, we have a Porum and a Palum. And we also have a potentially looming hook seed still. 
this is we may be seeing a d money seed you know uh i feel these seeds tend to swing one of two ways if you get early game characters who can actually use gear then you may just lean into that but when you get all these mages and yang is a mage his power comes from levels not from gear uh d money just speaks to you and that may be where the seed is headed yeah, I, I don't blame you for saying that, because I uh, definitely agree here that uh, uh, much as I am resistant to change, I am old and set in my ways, and I am... Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a position where D-Money does seem to be the... Uh, does seem to be the play that should probably happen with both the Giant Objective and, as you say, uh, Palamporum and Yong seem to be a very ideal group to go uh, and give D-Money levels to. Simbu here, evaluating his options. This kick coming out will one-shot the Porum. Uh, trying to do a little bit of attrition here, throwing life pots to get the team back up. Uh, problem here is with that how low level that Porum is, right? You can't really get any mileage out of her cure spells. She doesn't know Blink. Tella is going to try to do like three different things at once here. How are you even doing damage to the karate while you're trying to manage all this? Yeah, he looks like he's getting like one one or two power punches in. I do believe that's the second slow to actually land on a karate man. Um, and did buy like 30 life potions there. So it's going to run out of life potions. But uh, again, as you say, um, they're really not going to be surviving that kick all that well. So, I mean, is this just can, can we find some way to just escort young uh, the uh, party Yong to the finish here. I mean, uh, attrition is a concept. Uh, it will get you there sometimes, but this is a fight where discretion might be the better part of Valor. I will be very impressed uh, if and when we get through this fight. Yeah, I, I think actually with the Tella now at uh, full hit points here, able to take that uh, throwing in power staff here, and Kuros has decided that maybe, just maybe, th this bard is actually going to see some play here. Uh, I don't know, did he find a dancing dagger perhaps? <sighs> Let's see here. Checking the bard's starting equipment. Does come with lightning arrows, at least. Kind of curious here. Shortbow's not going to do you a lot of favors, but... The, those arrows have a lot of niche uses. We talk about the value of the Thunderclaw and of Hammer type. Lightning arrows will get you there in a pinch as well. Surprised it's just not even even lining up. Uh, just even lit ones here should do with uh, what we do have for Tella. Should at least do some decent damage here. So those power punches are at least coming in for uh, 400 there. I do know that that Yong does have double poison claw here. Uh, alongside, I want to believe, is a ninja, sh or, uh, not a ninja, sh a ninja hat, I believe. Um, so yeah, uh, Kyrios has picked up that bard. The bard is, uh, is still face down as most bards tend to come here, as uh, Simu is still going through, does down that, uh, does down that Yong there, and is rewarded with a hook seed. Hey, that's a fantastic find here. Gaining access to the Eblin Cave Shops. Guaranteed to have two Tier 5 items in the item shop. There's another character swap if you like it. Uh, just really impressive getting through that. The power of double slow on an already slow karate fight. Uh, really brought that home for Senbu. Very well done. And uh, <laughs> that, that sleeping Eddie on Curios side. I think the real value there was actually getting a handful of levels on that poor little Porum. Yeah, both the Porum and, uh, again, uh, Yang's strength is levels. I believe just getting at least one there. Um, I anything you can get this Yang here, uh, who is kind of start. If you can get that Porum any closer to Berserk here, Simbu is immediately dropping that Hovercraft, and I believe just kind of wants to see his options in terms of this character in the back here. Now, I will note that... Uh... Oh, Cursed Ring, by the way. Fantastic pickup. You can now just keep the Tella or the Palum and never be concerned about their agility getting too high to properly anchor the rest of the party's agility. Uh, but the thing I'm thinking about here is if you see another mage down here, D money, the D machine grind becomes very lucrative. But we've still not seen Valvalis out there yet. So there may still be a merit to keeping Yang around as well, just in case. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's yes. I would love to see a Rydia down here. Oh, coffins and hourglasses, as well as more life potions there in that shop. A very uh, 
very nice shot, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's do we have as uh, somebody named Possum Morpheus uh, has always called it valveless insurance here. Um, yeah, we definitely need some way to at least get by her. And Simu's just looking to fill out the. Uh, I mean, does have that palum, so is uh, technically got the team filled out here. But uh, yeah, be be very interesting to see. Um, not only, I mean, we do also have sirens, and we do know where they are. They're on the moon, and the big question there is: just because you have sirens, uh, are we trying to lean away from a team machine run? Oh, they're. You know, if you think your team has enough power to manage the rest of the seed and just get those levels naturally, because we do have a lot. We we have a moon altar. We have both Fey March fights. We have the giant to do, right? Uh, if you think you can get away with just doing one or two gold dragon fights on the moon, you're going to get all the cash you need for the seed. If you get double life glitches off, you're in even better shape. Uh, so there's a lot of options there. But Ridia here... Definitely makes me start thinking. <laughs> we, we found not one mage, but we found four mages down here with the Mega Sisters being at the Rubicon slot here. Um, again, Rydia down here uh, does make me think. I mean, yeah, the, the greedy part of me says, uh, telling Yong perhaps to eh, sit this one out for a little bit. But I mean, we could just uh, at least send, uh, you could just send Rydia to the Tower of Witches here, as Simbu is, both of our runners are both yet to. Uh, yet to do Mount Ordeals here and just pick her up. That was two strength rings, by the way, for this uh, heavy mage team. Also, Black Belt P, um, Longsword, Mute Knife, uh, did buy the headband, I think, here. But yeah, again, Curse Ring, couple of strength rings. Uh, yeah, very nice. Oh, even a tiara there uh, for that for that possible idea. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of things that. Uh, again, I, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm coming around here. This does seem like uh, very much uh, D machine territory. Yeah, the just if we had. Well, okay, samurai, but samurai arrows and an elven bow for Simbu. That does give us strong anti mage capability here regarding fighting those Magus sisters. Uh, you'd want Porum to be able to get up to Zerk and Zerk herself, and she can dish out a surprising amount of damage. You really would like to have a heroine robe to pair with it, of course. Uh, pink tail on ordeals would give us an adamant armor. I think if we get a pink tail off ordeals, I would just roll with it. Forget, forget doing the big grind. Let's just see how powerful the the titular piece of gear of the adamant cup makes any team. <laughs> I think he would make me, uh, again, with sirens and coffins both available. Yeah, I'd probably at that point just go mash a few eggs, get a uh, pal the quake at least, get Yong to the point where that punching is actually going to do uh, nice things here. And uh, we do, or everything is, is kind of going, including that long sword. Um, I, I think Simbu is all but announcing here. Uh, actually buying four more vampires here. Oh, okay, that's, that's an ordeals kit right now as... Uh, Curios is actually heading straight there, um, and those are Ether 2s. Okay, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I think Simbu has all but announced that D-Money is in the immunity future here. Yeah, well, two Ether 2s, I'm not sure that's going to get you quite all the way home, but we do know Ether 1s are for sale in Mesidia, right next door to the whale anyway. But both racers, same team for now. Curio is going to give us the first sight on ordeals. It is a lunar sparkle. We know we have a way underground already. But, uh, did you save those fire claws at the early uh, part of the seat here? As here are two lunars, and uh, again, no real uh, attack magic or attack power to write home at here. Um, does begin the bluffing here. Uh, the twin command also going to be very useful here in terms of uh, sending the D-Lunars packing. Yeah, I do know that Simbu's uh, Horum has a tiara equipped. So uh, getting a little boost to the black magic, even through the white mage. So we'll see if his twin magic also comes into play here. I think this is one of the one times... Um, now, you will have to correct me on this, but um, the flare that comes out from... Uh, Twin magic is that fire elemental? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not elemental. 
Asimbu uh, also actually having access to that Gaia drum from the uh, looting that I did see in uh, Cave Evelyn there. So that uh, that Zeus Rage just uh, just two J items and done, and just like that, Simbu is ahead of Karyos in this uh, in this ordeals here. Oh yeah, but Simbu also has the knowledge of the uh, of a lot of stuff down that hook route. Not even saving here between fights, rolling on in, does not get punished with a plague. Uh, but you better get some Star Bells up in a hurry here. And, uh, I mean, at this point, it's just uh, Star Bells. I did believe uh, one of them did see where the Star... Uh, it was Simbu who did see where more Star Bells are for sa sale here. Um, at this point, it's... Yeah, just... Uh, I, I can't figure on doing more than two here. It seems overkill, but uh, yeah, just throwing them up looks like on the kids here. That's who you really want to get the levels on. It would be great to get Yong here as well, but uh, yeah, beggars can't be choosers at this kind of point here. And uh, again, Star Bale's just kind of expensive, and you just want to keep as many of them on hand as possible here. Yeah, this is a little trickier for Curios. Like you said, uh, the Star Bales we saw in Kaipo, uh, and Starter Kid only had two. So being willing to use those here, uh, it, it, it's a much bigger consumption of resources for Curios than it is for Simbu. Yep, and only Porum uh, gets the uh, Star Veil there. So it did save one Star Veil, but again, did not buy any either, as far as I can tell here. But uh, anyway, inside the Paladin room, we have... Well, huh. um... I mean, that's interesting for more than one reason. Yeah, that's, that's really going to give our runners the big decision, right? Uh, and it'll probably be informed by the treasury, because uh, we know Ether 2s are for Cell and Troya, right? So you can loot the treasury if you're saying, I'm leaning into the full mage party comp, let me just buy some more Ether 2s, I'm going to go do the D-Machine grind. You can. Uh, on the other hand, if you find some really good, you know, weaponry and armor there, you might start thinking, let me run it on up Zot and see if I find uh, characters that don't require that much of an initial investment. Yeah, especially with that Tela being online there. And, uh, oh, that forum does have Berserk there. So uh, at the very least, um, Yang at this point, especially if we find, you know, let's say we find, a, you know, a spare power shirt and a Zeus gauntlet here, maybe a cat claw or two. Um, at, at that point, Yom can just say, don't worry, I got this. Yeah, if you find those, yeah, it, very easy to lean into him there. If it contains stuff like, I don't know, you know, more Gungnirs or a, a ninja blade or two, maybe you start thinking, let me run on up here. Uh, if it has a heroine robe, Maybe you say, let me just lean into Battle Porum right now and not worry about all that. Yeah, I believe uh, we do have a shot of Tier 7s in there as well. So, uh, I mean, you know, the, the dream, an Artie Bow and a Heroine Robe? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, I think Max Treasure Tier in Untrapped Chest is only 6. Ah, on uh, that's uh, right, uh, yes. Flags. So, a little nerf to the Treasury, but Simbu is flying there. Are you running all the way up the tower, or do we want a little more loot? I mean, uh, at this point, 30 minutes into the seed, this party's still, I'm totally here to raid this treasury. Raid that treasury! All right, let's keep eyes open here and see what Simbu pulls. Curios, not interested. Rune ring, another cursed ring there. Uh, silent stick. Overax, long sword, two <laughs> strings, a full moon. Uh, I'm not impressed with it, um, uh, but uh, Karyos hasn't seen any of those curse rings. Should run into one or two of them, but is already doing step routing here uh, for D machines. So Karyos has already um, apparently picked up those ethers and is ready to go right onto the giant here. I did note there was also a dragon whip there. So. Uh... I mean, if you can get underground, eggs are also super speedy. Uh, Simbu knows where there's Iridia who could equip it. But I, I kind of, I think this is kind of cool. Curious, not looking at the treasury, does not care. Let me figure out my formation. Let's get rolling. I love seeing a stack of three cursed rings, by the way. It's just such a rarity. <laughs> I think uh, in my time of playing these seeds, I believe I had one seed 
where I think I found a grand total of five curse rings. I, I was a very rich person. Those curse rings are not cheap. Yep. And uh, you know, chat, we will we will do our best to <laughs> to explain the ins and outs of what's happening here. Kyrios was checking encounters outside Mysidia to uh, you can follow the encounter tables. There's a nice chart made by community member Twisted Flax. Uh, Kyrios should have set it up to guarantee a D machine summoning searcher whenever he turns his encounters back on. Uh, Simbu, I kind of like this as well, not bothering with it, because if there's a freebie at the element spot that you can just kill instead, you're going to save a lot of time on your grind. So uh, each player taking a different approach to what is about to be a huge power up of levels and XP for all their teams. Yeah, we're just uh, we're, we're just at this point where uh, I, I was not ready for uh, dueling D machine grinds here today, and here we are. Uh, it's fine though. This is one of the biggest pieces of free enterprise tech taken from the vanilla No 64 run. Uh, this is where, in the vanilla speed run, you're going to get all your levels uh, for the end game, uh, just to get enough to take care of Element CPU and Zeromus in turn. Ooh. But before we talk about that grind, what about that fight? Simbu does have... Well, actually, Simbu has the Hourglass. Simbu has a Tela, which is moving into the middle row, middle spot right now, is getting that Rune Ring, and uh, a Tela does no stone. Well, getting the Curse Ring uh, to make sure the agility works out here. Here's the other thing, too, though. You, you can tote these things. You can life to these things. You can grind just on those guards if you want to. You could absolutely do that there. And that, uh, I believe that's, uh, so that's 205,000 experience there. So uh, each guard, yeah, the life two grind right there is a hundred and a uh, hundred thousand and small, that's a 2,500. Yeah, 100,000 25, yeah, 120. 2,500 XP. I can do numbers today, I promise. But uh, unfortunately, it does seem to be looking for a D machine fight there. No! Uh, no! Go get your partial levels! No! You, you see the freebie and you know, my heart is broken. Ugh. Oh, that. that mm. <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna cry now, a little now bit. Does, I mean, do have to have uh, decent ways. I mean, Tela. Does, actually, does Tela get. Yeah, Tela, Tela gets fatal, right? No. No? Oh, well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe the coffins are in the inventory for the fast kill at that point, though. I mean, you have weak, weak you have stone, yeah. you have because we're about to see weak a whole lot of times. The, uh... I mean, can't like too weak or stone at least. Can't like to the. Uh... <sighs> but yeah, what we're gonna see here: D machines give tons of XP. They are vulnerable to the weak spell. They will have one to nine HP after it lands. And we're gonna do a little thing called the life glitch or vitality zero glitch. Every time you see one of these life potions go out where the D machine was, uh, it's coming back to life with zero HP and dying again. You don't see it, but it's happening. Uh, our runners will probably do, uh, how many is it? 22, so 11 plus 11 to get Palamon pour on their ultimate spells. Uh, yeah, I believe that is around the case there. Am I, uh, it's weird seeing uh, beams come out on the back attack there. Uh, uh, seeing beams come in from around the world, more or less. So, for what it's worth, though, this is going to make the race, I think, very interesting going forward. Uh, we have both players with the exact same party comp. They're doing the exact same grind. Uh, I think one big difference here, though, is Kyrios' lack of a curse ring means he will feel compelled to kill his Tela at the end, whereas Simbu can let Tela get XP as well and even, you know, climb up to, you know, over four digits of HP. Uh, that may be a determining factor, or it could just be sheer execution from here on out the rest of the scene. Yeah, that is kind of what it's looking right here. I mean, uh, again, or just... Um... Now, now the question is, at this point, with the cursed ring in his inventory, you could let Tela gain XP. But what if we find, you know, like a like a Sid? I mean, you can then always, you know, swap out. The uh, I think 
having the Teller around for utility is pretty good, just in the long, in the grand scope of things. Uh, especially as I don't think we have any really good Sid weapons. Uh, so it, it's hard to say, but I, I'm a big proponent of Tella myself, just because he, uh, so much utility, even if not a whole lot of direct power. I mean, uh, this is going to drop the hype a little bit of that uh, that faith arch there if we come in rolling in with uh, with a uh, nuke, a white, and uh, you know about five thousand hit points on this yong. <laughs> well, while we are going through, uh, and also note how good the rotation is here. Like, it's really nice to, and each each runner has their own little sequence here. Uh, ideally, you want to be able to. Bob the Searcher to summon a D-Machine, cast weak, hit it, life lich, repeat. Uh, the flame will do 20% of a character's max HP, so as long as you don't zone out and stop paying attention, this is just hugely reliable, tons of XP for the teams. I suppose this might not be a bad time to mention the other Adamant Cup matches happening this evening. Yeah, I will actually uh, pop some of those up here. I think we got two more tonight over on the Free Enterprise channels. Yes, we do. And uh, give me just one moment here. I know I always have these around. Just uh... oh, there we go. We have uh, at uh, nine thirty Eastern. We have Moonblaze Wolf versus Rybon over on Free Enterprise Two. And at 8 o'clock Eastern here, we also have, uh, I believe that's, uh, these are game, twos for, uh, game two for Possum Morpheus and Woo Bear as well. Excellent, excellent. Both good matches. We are in the, we're down to the Elite Eight. Uh, wait, is that a trademark term? We're down to the Excellent Eight <laughs> remaining in the tournament. And all these matches have been so great to see in the bracket stage. And even, you know, group stage was not slacking, but we're down to, you know, the cream of the cream, the best runners of the game going at it, and uh, every match is just really, really good. I've been enjoying watching Free Enterprise this tournament in a way that I have earnestly not in quite a while. It's been so good to see the level of competition. Very much so, and uh, I, I mean, I, I, I wish I was here still. I just left in the last round here, but uh, yeah, it has been a rather, um, uh, again, I, I, I really haven't played that Free Enterprise tournament I've really uh, disliked here, and yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it speaks to how much we can continue coming up with new and innovative ways to actually roll these tournaments here. That, that's still keeping fresh. Oh yeah, the uh, kind of the, the big defining feature of this one, other than Adamant Armors making their overpowered return to the game after being absent for a bit, uh, the, the party size four here, uh, it gives it a very classic, like, you know, like Final Fantasy one and Final Fantasy six kind of feel after, because, or is really the main one where you have a party of five to work with. And just limiting all our runners in this way has been really fun to watch and see how they prioritize their party composition. Uh, it does kind of definitely requires you to think a little more here as, uh, you know, usually at least running with a party of four here, um, you, usually if you have like your anchor situation, like we only do with uh, Tela here, Usually, I mean, any kind of anchor, honestly, but uh, usually when you have four usable party members here, it's uh, it's a little more academic where you don't have to, uh, I mean, where you could have your three nuke mages and keep a battle insurance, but now you actually kind of have to keep this Yong around and, uh, and keep something for a nasty physical spot that might, uh, again, we actually haven't seen Ogopogo yet either, and you know, much as you probably could get through that, I don't wanna, uh, I mean, I don't mind slinging nukes at them, but uh, uh, that's, a, that's a battle of attrition I don't want there. That is also, that's an excellent point, that because of how many bosses do have uh, reaction scripts, you know, counterattacks to direct magic, uh, Simbu's gonna be, have an easier time of it with those spare star veils. Because uh, you can bypass all those scripts just by walling up your character and then reflecting the spells off of them. Curios just has the one star veil. And that, of course, uh, when, when do you decide to use that? Do you save it all the way for the Zeromus? Do you have to burn it because of a Wyvern? Do you just try to cast Reflect manually with your Porum in time? 
uh, these are questions that Simbu's not going to have to wrestle with. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's almost uh, almost absolutely earmarked for uh, a wyvern here, just because again, unless you unless you find like a heroin rover or something to throw on for him and uh, find some way to make sure she absolutely gets that first turn, or, you know, in terms of party order as well, um, you're, you're just going to need that to uh, get through a rude uh, wyvern who could, you know, be sitting at, like, an Odin throne, or could be sitting at, uh, you know, like a, Luke, a required Luka cave, or, you know, things like that. And down goes Tella on... Actually, was that a premature down goes Tella on... Uh, on Sabu's side there, as Tella just gets lifed up. Uh, may have forgotten to weak the searcher first. Uh, it, yeah, weeks coming out. Simbu has completed his grind. That's all he wants from this. Uh, I wonder if he did a recalculation based on knowing there's a freebie fight in the next, uh, in the very next spot. Maybe that's why he st he started his grind after Curios and is already finishing it. So the question is, did he cut it short or did he just do it far more efficiently? Let's see what these uh, spell levels say. What was that, 837,000, I believe? I think 937,000, in fact. Let's see if Holy White pops on Porum. Yep, there's White. Palum, meanwhile, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's hitting level 52 from this. We should see Nuke popping up. Just a few more spells. And there you go. Simbu's grind is done. Got the levels on the kids. With the Cursed Rings, honestly surprised he let Tella, uh, he didn't just keep Tella up. I mean, you got three Cursed Rings, you know, the seat's kind of yelling at you. <laughs> curse yeah. the old man, curse him! I am very interested to see what, uh, what Kyrgios' target here is. You know, I, <laughs> I, I was doing commentary with Martin the other week, and I, as he so wisely said, no kill like overkill. Frankly, just having, if you don't have really good mage gear for these kids, the extra levels are going to come in very helpful uh, just to increase their spell power, increase Yang's physical prowess as well. Uh, if you're already here and you're doing it this early, I don't hate getting a few extra D machines in for the long haul. I believe I was stating, uh, I was stating a doubled XP here on the, uh, that's, that's uh, 205,000 with the double XP. I normally don't come here without it, honestly, but uh, yeah, just 102,500 at the spot, which uh, again, not, you know, nothing to turn your nose up at, but. Uh... Yep, yep. And we see that stone cast coming out from Palum immediately. Did not knock Tella down this time. So Tella is getting this XP. Uh, I bet during the re-equip, he probably realized that he had the curse drink. Just because you know you're you're in the throes of a D machine grind, it's easy to forget what all you're you're carrying around. But it's like, oh yeah, he can have a little XP. <laughs> yep, and uh, it does look like Kyrios is downing this Tella here as well. I did just see the week come out on the eye here, so let's actually see just how much XP uh, Kyrios made it to here. And ooh. This would make me so nervous after doing a D-Machine fight. Both fights here, free. Uh, as long as you have a, the ability to reflect spells for the second one, which, uh, of course, two white, ca two reflect casters, Starvels, uh, we, we do have that capability. Totally missed how much XP Kyrios just got off of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, uh, the comedy hour, uh, one night only, uh, Core of the Giants here. Yeah, I'm excited to compare the HP on the Palums and the Porums here. Did not quite get his Palum to nuke. The, uh, I guess this is, you know, Simbu's years of experience coming through. Uh, just managed that D-Machine Riot so quickly, so efficiently. Uh, got into it afterwards, left before, and had all the necessary levels for nuke and holy. Carry was get healed the next fights. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully we'll not need that nuke spell uh, or anything at the uh, next fight here, uh, given that it's just going to be free. And um, yeah, oh no, um, I mean, I know Palom's going to be standing here, but that Yang's HP is counting down there. I believe we're about to, unless this uh, holy ends it here, are, are we going to get an HP run out here? Nope, Yang will <laughs> live by one tick. <laughs> Whew. 
All right, makes it through. And beautiful, we're gonna be lighting up objective number seven first. All these other options and giant of Babel, first one done by these racers today. Now, Curious here getting the dubious news. Wait a minute, this is a free fight. Uh, am I in trouble? I did. Oh, uh, oh okay. Is virusing Tella here? Did uh, did throw out the hourglass? So uh, these two guards doing absolutely nothing here. Throwing out Berserk isn't going for the stone cast here. Oh, remembered it. Oh, okay. You just had to send your consciousness 15 minutes into the past, and Curios became aware of it. The commentator's oh, yeah. blessing, you might say. If only I could do that myself. Now, just because Palom missed, I don't think that's a reason not to try again here. Uh, how, how much HP did these two have each? Uh, we, what, 55,000 apiece? Yeah, this will take a while this way. All right, we did see another spell getting queued up on the kid. That's good. I mean, it is Quake, but... Uh... He's helping, he's helping. That, that so, is actually a good question in chat there. If Yong had 2 HP before the UI script, would he have been zombified, i.e. alive with 0 HP? I believe he would have fallen over, but I'm not entirely sure of that. Yeah, I think he fall over on that final tick. Uh, not positive as well either. It's not happened to me at that spot. Uh, Simbu, according to me, the official, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. According to the official rules of Free Enterprise, uh, if your final character does uh, hit two HP on that uh, on the flashbang there and does fall over as the Romus goes down, um, that that is not considered a victory. That's true. That's true. The uh, one of those vanilla speedrun rules that persist. You must get to. You must have completed the actions that will let it proceed to the end <laughs> instead of a perished, even if Zeromus is dead as well. No double kills, no double knockouts. There we go. Speaking of objectives, we're going immediately to the Marisame altar here, the only objective spot on the moon here, and that's, uh, that's only Plague. Gonna zerk up that Yong. I think this is Actually, you know, there are some high HP spots where it's you can actually do a reflected doom kill, uh, but this team is so strong and has so much damage output, 100% on board with just uh, tearing through the HP here. Yep. Yeah, uh, Kyrios already now through, does have Nuke on the kid, um, is going to be uh, uh, heading to uh, Comedy Hour on the Giant here uh, momentarily as uh, Yang Yon just uh, casually just keeps punching like for 2,500 around. And I wonder if this is going to actually alter Kyrios's routing at all. Uh, committed to the D-Machine grind before entering, does see not one but two free fights after already doing the grind. Uh, and knowing you're up against Simbu, who could have done both of those fights without any grind to start with. Uh, I wonder if this will make him nervous, if it'll make him change his routing up. Uh, look forward to finding out his thoughts about this particular giant when all is said and done. Meanwhile, Simbu wins the damage race with everybody on one, which, uh, again, I probably would have done the same thing there in terms of, yeah, I can kill this Plague before zero, and uh, picks up a Holy Sword. Um, unfortunately, Cecil is at the beach. <laughs> but does light up objective number three, has a decent chunk of cash now if he uh, wants to buy other J items. A Zerk on that Yang can help out immensely in all these fights leading up to the end. Now, uh, Curious's Porum did survive there, and I don't see if anybody got the, uh, got a veil off here. Uh, that lit three, um, it, just, just the damage cap. <laughs> yeah, the CPU spot in, in vanilla has HP based attacks and heals, and one big heck you, you're dead attack. But what this means, of course, is that the devs gave it extremely high physical and extremely high spell power. Anything here, no matter who it is, is going to be nasty if you can't uh, can't tear through it in a hurry or, you know, defend yourself. I remember seeing some very rude antlions here. Uh, 
Simu, meanwhile, completely committed to the full moon clear. Uh, kind of curious, because we've not seen a pass yet, of course, and we know these bottom altars are not required. So maybe opening himself up to having to walk the moon a second time. Perhaps, or just wants to get it over with. I mean, it is power overwhelming here. Um, you really don't see much on this moon that's really going to be a threat. Um, I could just say, hey, I'm just going to wipe it out now so I don't have to come back later, unless it's... Uh, I mean, at that point, what's really stopping you on the blue planet, I guess? That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, to refer back to doing the D-Machine, right? <laughs> just for a moment. This is now another free 100,000 XP just sitting out there. Just free for the take. Uh, water Hag coming in hot at the Ogopogo altar in a minute, perhaps? <laughs> With, uh, I'm gonna do you one better here. That Water Hag can punch. Uh, how about some, uh, how about some uh, soldier officer there? Uh, so something even life glitchable. Ooh. As long as you got the spare hourglass left over, right? Fun. Anyway, although the king and the queen will burn themselves out eventually, uh, if you take down the king, the queen's next action will just be uh, use vanish which is a fancy way of saying, Blah, I'm dead. Uh, so <laughs> sometimes faster to take out the king as we see you there rather than waiting. And we get, well, that's a required item, all right. Yep, um, already the value on the moon here with that package there. We can now burn down uh, myths and get objective one here. But uh, hey, why not go for more, even though we just found two key items in the uh, in the ribbon room. And meanwhile, Kyrios has also completed his Giant of Babel, lighting up number seven here. I doubt he takes the Sid. Been working very hard at keeping that Tella on the ground, but let's find out. No, there he goes, and um, that, speaking of not utterly threatening, that's a Dark Elf. Yeah, <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet. <laughs> Freest moon ever. Uh, Dark Elf more annoying than threatening because phase two, you can stop it. You can weaken it. Uh, has no boss bit and it must scream. I mean, doesn't even have a ton of hit points at this uh, current uh, juncture here, but uh, again, does have that hourglass just uh, sitting there as a, uh, as form does go to a white li or a silent staff that was found in the treasure here. Now, Kyrios uh, has found that hovercraft and is forsaking the moon, says, we're going straight underground right now. Uh, I like this. You know you have the king and the queen, both objectives, both accessible. You have other freebies down here. Your team is very much strong enough to deal with these fights. I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. And also, I love seeing the divergence here in the booth. Things to talk about is always nice as uh, Dark Elf uh, folds immediately here. Uh, again, that team machine grind did give me a little bit of spending cash as well here. Only an apple there on the white spear. Now, now that might actually be... Now, if uh, Simu does clear out that moon and only does fine, say that package, and everything else is underground, that actually kind of feels like it's more advantage Kyrios, because I could see Kyrios doing the uh, mirror altar than marching straight down to the ribbon room there. Oh yeah, agreed, agreed. But that gold apple's not the worst pickup. Even a level, what, 60 Porum, barely breaking 2,000, and something tells me we're not going to be finding an awful lot of more mage gear this seed. All right, now here's something There's nasty on the There's the rude part. Okay, we found the rudeness. Very thankful to have Nuke here. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a hot minute here, but we have Blink, we have Slow, the team is safe. You're just gonna have to deal with, mm, let's say, a combined two turned into mists, maybe three, if Callum Low rolls a whole bunch. Uh, due to the case, Kyrios uh, does exchange anchors there, d uh, bends the uh, Tela there, picks up the Rydia. She is far easier to keep on the ground. <laughs> 30 HP, nice and easy to take care of. 
a little less utility, much as I hate to say it there. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, as you say, 30 HP, uh, most AoEs will just do it for you. Um, I, I mean, to be fair, most punchy bosses will just knock Tella down with one hit as well, but um, yeah. e even easier in this case. It is still funny to me, though, just knowing that there are three cursed rings out there. One in the second chest of Evelyn, two in the treasury. Just, it's... It, it, it feel, you feel a little bad seeing someone work to make sure they keep the anchoring set up when you, the other player can just let Tella have all the levels now and not have to even blink twice at it. It does also. It, it kind of feels bad knowing that Kyrios just you know ran through that entire cave Evelyn there. Um, it's probably not going to open another non-key item chest the seed. Oh yeah, I, I would definitely. And he's completely correct not to. <laughs> no argument there. Well, just a nice shirt on the Ogopogo altar as we do get elements at the uh, King-Queen slot here, so one nuke and done here. Yeah. And Simbu reset back, loses the apple and the white shirt. Uh, you know, both things I really like for a Purim, but it, it, he does not even want to spend the 10 seconds to walk back to the prior floor. Gotta keep moving. Yep. Meanwhile, um, just again, just a Mega Sisters here should probably do uh, Kyrios a favor and down that Rydia for them, but uh, uh, you yeah, know we'll kind of see here. Quake and Zerk. I do like the Zerk coming out sooner rather than like <laughs> they're so helpful. Uh, <laughs> it's good to get the Zerk queued up now because the Sisters will start reflecting their own walls onto your team. And if one lands on your Yang, you're not going to be able to Zerk him without one. Speaking of Rude Pain Man, um, there he is, the Crystal Sword Altar here. Oh yeah, I believe this is one of the, yeah, this is, it may not be one that tops off at 1305, but, ooh, it is nasty. I saw a fun suggestion uh, on one of the streams the other day of uh, for the devs to start randomizing whatever is not the only right in the world. <laughs> okay, I can get behind that. D machines are not the only right in this world. A Cheesecake. Runners may, a runners may not agree with that D machine thing here. Now, however, um, uh, again, like we said, Simbu has missed, with the exception of the, uh, I mean, yeah, the Luka Key is also in that, uh, also in that room there, and might give Curios pause if, you know, we're missing, like, say, exactly a Sand Ruby here. We have a Sura at the top of uh, the tower here, which I'm going to guess Curios is actually just going to turn around with that Cower Key and immediately just go check. I, I I would disagree with that. We have the king, queen, and king of the town of monsters, both objectives. Uh, super cannon not required this save. We always say chase your objectives, and there's two plus a free chest sitting right there for you in Fae March. The uh, no matter how tempting that is, I think Fae March is absolutely the way for Kyrios to go here. Sabu is not going to leave the cave value unturned though. Uh, do you still have one more place to check? And you are correct, Kyrios chasing the key items. Uh, I, I told you at the start when we got that tower key, I do not trust early tower keys. Keyless tower all the way. We are, uh, so confirmation bias versus uh, j just a hunch on two, uh, two key item checks there. And um, hi, Odin. Uh, the punch is here, gonna be real painful. But I actually think this Yang is able to survive the Zentetsu Uh But we don't have a Thunderclaw, do we? I have not seen a Thunderclaw. I've seen Fire, I've seen Poison. I haven't even seen Blizzard now that I think about it. So yeah, um, yeah. again, Yang topped off should actually, as you say, survive that Zentetsu And And uh, I mean, hey, even even Tella and, uh, well, I mean, the kid's gonna be slinging noobs, but uh, I mean, even Tella could throw in a light or... or uh, a lit three here. Oh yeah. But I don't think we're going to be seeing it. Uh, the fact that Palum survived two of the punches here, uh, Simbu should be squared away. Should have more than enough damage output here to kill it before. So we're all three on the kid. <laughs> Oda knows who the threat is. 
unfortunately, uh, wow, while he did dispense the nuke there, one holy came out and ended it through all those other punches there. Uh, got through, and we have... Well, that's 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 kind of value in K Bahamut right there. That's fantastic for Simbu. Uh, the concern was that he would have to walk the lunar subterrain twice. He's not on the moon. He's never coming back here. That is enough of that garbage for him. Yeah, again, really big for Kyrios there. Um, I would guess with, uh, again, unless Luca has exactly either the Sand Ruby, um, the uh, the Pink Tail, or the Route 2, uh, Kyrios should be finding both of those here on the underground. Or, you know, it could just also be uh, behind a Twin Harp or a Baron Key still. Yeah, but the problem for Kyrios, as chat is wisely pointing out, is that uh, if Kyrios goes to the moon and chases his objective, he goes to the Murasame altar, doesn't find the package, then, oh, let's just go on down to the to the lower altars. Finds it at the freebie king-queen fight, does ne never goes to Cave Bahamut, and thus has to walk the moon the second time that Simbu's not going to have to do here. Yeah, that that is there, and that's uh, roughly. Um, and I have timed it myself that the uh, that the walk of shame there, which is uh, which is I uh, started timing as I walked into the whale uh, from uh, pulling the Zeromas fight with a safety save in between at uh, LST seven is roughly about two minutes fifteen seconds. Mm. So now I am wondering if Simbu is going to take that other route I mentioned upon hitting the underground. Uh, you do have that early tower key, but... Fey March. Two objectives, plus a freebie. Where are we gonna go? I mean, I, I definitely see the wisdom in doing so. But um, uh, again, it's, it's the one thing where, you know, hey, I chase my objectives and I come up with, let's say, uh, let, let's say Pan and uh, a Magma Key here <laughs> uh, down there. Chase the Pan, it turns into nothing while, oh my, there's Ooh. value at top of the tower and a pigtail. That's that, required. Yep, yep. That will be objective number six. Uh, absolutely go pick that up before you go to Fey March. Keep these uh, little, little mage kids alive through the worst of punches. Uh, I'm hoping Tower Key is nothing, just so I can still be like, Still should have done Keyless Tower. <laughs> I'm sticking to my guns. <laughs> I do not blame you, uh, you, even if it is. But yeah, I mean, this is this is the galaxy brain play. If this turns out to be Sand Ruby here, as uh, as Kyrios will know that he would be in go mode right then and there. Well, still needs the package, of course. Oh, true. Yes. Uh, sorry. We we he would not know, but we would uh, we would be to the moon there. And uh, that, that said, unfortunately, the Baron Key is down here somewhere, or the path to the Baron Key is down here somewhere, unless it's you know behind the chain on that Luca Key. Um, uh, it could also be up inside. Let's not forget that Earth Crystal we've had. Oh yeah, time. we did fade that. Uh, they did. Uh, one person did go in that treasury. One person did not uh, want anything to do with it. And. Uh, yeah, here we are, um, and uh, we have landed on the airship, and here we have a defense sword. Ah, the, the keyless tower portfolio wins again. <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's great. Uh, surprised to not see the pink tail turn in before running down here, though. You got the levels, but you have to turn it in anyway. And I think the, the extra defense and the huge stat boost would accelerate both these fights. I mean, it does depend on who's down here, and Kyrios did not see the uh, the 50% of a free, absolutely free moon here, so um, it does, does still have a couple free bosses that we know are off the table still, at least in his uh, purview here. And the free pan down here. Oh, seeing stuff like that really has to start making you nervous about the, the D-Money grind, in my opinion. Like, this is a seat where... Mm -hmm. <sighs> Especially if you end up seeing something like Edge in Zot along with a required uh, Sand Ruby, all of a sudden you get real nervous about your routing choices. So. I mean, with these two, I'm not sure either of them are feeling super nervous here. Uh, that's oh. a... 
Oh, oh is, it, is it an all gauntlet? No, it's just a water hag. This is still pretty funny, though, because yeah. I love seeing a water hag punch for nearly 2,000 damage. True. It is a very angry water hag. So I want to one thing about Simbu's party order here. Uh, just again, we have basically the same party comp. Uh, uh, Kyrios did swap the Tella for the ready for anchoring, but Simbu's turn order here is engineered so that he opens by zerking Yang when he needs to with Porum. Uh, she could also open with a blink, and then you start casting spells with Palum. And that way, Yang's turn, his battle menu, never even pops up, and you don't even have to deal with that mess. So it just gives you a little better turn utility and uh, just saves your actions. It's really nice. But and that is no mode here. We did fine, and you called uh -oh. it. Hey, let's go to the uh, <laughs> let's go to the Fey March here. So at this point, it comes into how soon does Simbu check this tower? Uh, well, he's going to absolutely do both of these. He's going to turn in the pan. He'll turn in. If he has a rat tail, he'll turn that in as well. Uh, the tower key does make it a very tempting play, and if he goes top down, he won't even have to go by the tower key room. Uh, he'll just have all the keys to the kingdom. True. Uh, just a moment, I do have a knock on my door. One moment, please. Gotcha, gotcha. Sabu finds the pan. Curios here going to take a great advantage of Quake to keep the arms down so that Yang can keep punching the main body. Simbu healing up. Gonna similarly have, like, with these levels, neither player is having a problem with with these fights, of course. It's just how many seconds can you gain through better action economy? And I guess to a lesser degree, what value is this level 37 Tella really bringing to Simbu's team? Down goes Bygen for Kyrios. Let's see if Bygen yields any rabbit holes here. A Baron key would be pretty bad, and we know it is somewhere here on the blue planet. The Mispo uh, would have liked to have that about one hour ago. <laughs> Curious appears to actually be checking the shops here, maybe looking for some stat sticks for the team, maybe some cat claws for Young just to give him even more juice. Not going to the armor shop though. And wine in the shop, 10 pack for the monk. Simbu getting in a little inventory management during the uh, the quake animation is relatively slow. The arms go away and Bygen casts wall. That buys you quite a decent amount of time to flip things around as you so desire. Now, does he save before fighting the blue rover? Does he just run headlong in? A cure for, and there we go. Going right into this fight. Doesn't know if it's Alt Gauntlet or Water Hag. Comfy either way, though. My apologies, I have returned there. I did see the Artibo come off the bike in there. Um, and now we're just kind of in a situation here. Um, it, 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 I believe it just kind of comes down to who just uh, gets uh, tossed down the larger rabbit hole here. That's a big big rabbit hole for Kyrios. Oh, that no. Baron Key may mark his doom. Uh, of course, you have the Earth Crystal as well, which is a slow check, but you look at it, it's like, oh, it routes so nicely. It'll throw me right in front of Baron. I can just do this and this and this. But we know here with our thousand foot view exactly where Kyrios needs to be headed. Now, to be fair, Simbu could fall down the same rabbit hole here as, uh, again, could just uh, does have the pan in hand. It knows that it is three checks here and could say, well, I'll just go do that. And, you know, hey, while I'm in the uh, while, while I'm in the area, Baron's just right over there. Simbu gets the sound. Ruby only needs a pink tail for go mode now. Uh, the other thing, too, that I, I don't know if 
When you have the package in the sand ruby, it's very important to do the sand ruby first. <laughs> Otherwise, you get locked into extra Kaipo cutscenes. And I wonder if either of our runners will uh, absentmindedly overlook that today as well. Um, I mean, Simbu is the one that would be at risk of it uh, with the uh, package up on the moon. Kyrios cannot do that just yet here. As uh, Rabbit holds a hoy, Sheila handing over the pink tail, as, or the uh, twin harp as well. Super dangerous. Now you have, you know, the full trifecta. Oh, well, I before I go to Baron, I might as well go to Zod, because it'll spit me out of Baron. Oh, I landed to go to Zod? Well, I might as well go to Twin Harp. I'm never going to be closer to it. And next thing you know, you've, you know, lost 10 minutes to your opponent. Yeah, and, and again, it just comes down to we know that... Uh... We know that Simbu could just be in the driver's seat with just a trip to the top of the tower here. But uh, again, has the same exact uh, things looming here as uh, we do get that pink tail turn in here. Uh, we do know Kyrios has the sand ruby. So is only needing the package there to uh, just hit go. And at that point, with one objective left, does Kyrios make the big play here and go to the moon after turning in the Sand Ruby? I mean, you know you have an objective there. But at the same time, you also know if you're going to the moon, you're committing to the entire moon, right? So it's a little tricky. Like, you're, you're not just going there and saying, well, if the Murasa on my altar doesn't have it, I'm coming back to the blue planet, right? So... Uh, I mean, at that point, you are definitely package or bust, but... Everyone's curing Rosa of her desert fever. But, uh, level 60, <laughs> pour them. We're, we're okay, Bay. You you just keep resting. Enjoy the desert oasis. Have a good time. We'll see you later. Next scene. Next scene. I, I mean, she probably appreciates it. She's been uh, in so many... Uh... And so many seeds of these day and age. Uh, yeah, Rosa, Rosa probably appreciating a rest here. So now for it, which way do these runners turn? Well, Simbu gonna go ahead and take care of the package as well. Gonna light up number one. Curios is landing at Troya. No. That might yeah. be the the nail in the coffin unless Simbu goes down every other rabbit hole available to him. I mean, we are on Blue Planet, and Simbu will have... I mean, Simbu still has yet to actually turn in uh, Sheila two, uh, 1 and 2 there, so uh, we'll get that Twin Harp there, unless it's uh, just not marked there. Um, I believe he has not been yet. So again, Simbu going to be uh, with the same choices there, and when you have uh, when you have the Trojan uh, duo there, and you have both in Baron, I mean, you've had that tower key in your pocket for a long time. Do you go straight to tower thinking, or do you even make the play where saying, well, hey, I got this Luka key off the moon. Should I just go chase that? Yeah, it, it, it is definitely a dilemma. Uh, I mean, Kyrgios can, of course, yeah, make this time back up, because what all, Simbu could take this exact same loop, could then even do Dwarf Castle and Luka. Plenty of rabbit holes for Simbu as well. Uh, but this is where we get back to the concern of when Kyrgios does go moon, if he targets that objective, he's not getting the pass. Guaranteed, basically, to have to walk the moon twice. And I think that may end up being the, the sheer difference here. Strange to see nobody magnetized in this fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you never loot anything. Pshaw. <laughs> we came prepared, Dark Elf waits. <sighs> Uh, all, all my characters, it, it's Sineki. Why would I have any? I, I thought you were required to run around with no equipment. My bad. Meanwhile, Simbu about to get the uh, the, the head tilting news of a pan and a Bacchus wine, or a twin harp and a Bacchus wine. Shilo, what were you doing cooking with both of those? Anyway, we are going to give y'all twin heart music. Keep an eye on where Simbu goes here. This could be a huge determining factor this race. Enjoy the tunes.
So with that heart music done, we do get some, uh, I don't know the exact, uh, the exact, uh, uh, tune of the Donkey Kong Country 2 music. Uh, I do know it plays on half the pirate ships in the game there. Uh, but again, Kiriro's just finding Glass Hat and of a much larger uh, import there. It is going to stop, but Simbu did leave a save at the bottom of the tower before he did go to check this Luka key that was up on the moon here. So uh, again, this is likely Simbu going to see this, going to see that it's junk and is going to then head up the tower and uh, and, and get the prize here. So uh, Simbu just jumping right into the cat for a seat here. Yeah, best thing for Kyrios here would be Simbu to find a rat tail and then he would be kind of committed to walking it out and checking it. Uh, or at least leaving a save here in the bottom to come back for it later. Dragoon Lance, no use for that. Uh, I really like this play here, leaving the save at the bottom of the tower, because, well, if Luca has nothing, you're resetting back to somewhere. A lot of us just save outside the cave door. Why not leave your save somewhere else? I will also note here that, uh, We'll see if Simbu realizes I only need the one item for go mode. I can't, I, you don't know what the tower key item is until you leave the tower. So it is typically correct to open, to fight the Dr. Luge spot first, see if that's your one key item. And if so, you don't have to do tower room at all. And that does seem to be where Simbu is headed here. Very much so. Yeah, now, a lot of times I do like to go check the tower key room if I have more than one uh, key item remaining. But yeah, down, down to one key item there. Um, yeah, absolutely no reason to uh, go check the tower key when you have a shiny key item that you will know the uh, the form of here, uh, just behind this Asura fight. Yeah, like if uh, if you don't have the pass yet, then sometimes, you know, it can be worth it to take a... The fight's always quick there. The cutscene is what gets you. The cutscene there and the cutscene with the, uh, the airship engineers downstairs, that, that really eats into your timer as well. But if you YOLO a pass out of there, it can save a lot of time on that uh, that front as well, but ooh, the the cutscenes they're so subtle because you know when you're racing you get this nice little break you get to just tap A you don't have to think too hard, uh, but they will eat into your timer. So we found Balbalus. She's a dwarf too. An edge and a cane. Saw a Gungnir Spear, saw Long Blades and Full Moons and Mute Knives. Uh, the seed could have gone very much a different direction. Oh yeah, that's, uh, again, had uh, you said one of them taken the Zot Bait, uh, would not have come up with a key item, but would have come up with a, uh, especially with uh, Yang already there, uh, come up with a perfectly good preserver team that uh, would not have needed the D-Machine grind, especially with how free that giant was. Yep, and we know that even the, the, well, pardon me, the second required item on the moon, the, uh, the package at the, at the D lunar spot, only guarded by King and Queen Asura, so levels not essential to really get your goodies this seed. Yep. Meanwhile, Simu getting the wonderful news that he is indeed in go mode and is, uh, uh again, just gonna turn into pink tail, grab an adamant armor, and, uh, and go say hello to Zaromas. Curious, meanwhile, takes down the Mom Bomb here. No explosions today, not with this kind of damage output. And a Magma Key here would be the very, the, the very curious find, right? Like, how how do you look back at the seed and feel about your decisions if this is a Magma Key? That is, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> we're about to find out here. And we get... Oh, just, just a Legend Sword. Uh, part of Forge we didn't need there. Uh, part of a tier uh, 7 or 8 item we were not likely going to find. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll just see if we call my, call my shot here. Uh, I do believe that does... Well, we're still, still a couple key items down, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to put the... Uh, in my head cannon here, I'm going to put the Adamant at Dwarf right now. And then... Let's see. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, wait, we still have a rat tail out of, uh, well, we do yeah. have Baron checks here, which we're going to see. Yeah, rat tail and magma key are both hanging as well. So <laughs> I was trying to think where you're, but you're right. It, it, that could just be exactly the value at dwarf. 
if you count that as value. Technically value. It could be another adamant armor. But meanwhile, uh, pretty speedy go mode for Simbu here. Did chase the objectives, did not fall into any other rabbit holes. Uh, and there were quite a few. Uh, the harp, the earth crystal, the baron key, all available, but said, eh, let me do this tower first. And uh, well, did go by sealed cave, pardon me, but sealed cave's great. You see the items trash, you reset out. No harm, no foul. 2100 hit point porum with uh, silent staff, sork robe, tiara, and a diamond ring. Uh, yeah, I don't see a big bang ever killing her. Yeah, I think the only question here is which strats are Simbu going to use? Is he going to go for pure reflect with a punch or two thrown in by Yang to get up to the uh, the reset threshold and then reflect the rest of the way? Or is it going to be full hybrid strats? Uh, just zerk the, zerk the monk up and throw all your other spells to chew through all 110,000. You gotta feel pretty good here if you're in Simbu's shoes, I think. Yeah, I, I would guess it's probably going to be reflected with a couple punches thrown in here. I mean, Yang does... Uh, I've seen some solo Yangs or almost as four. Um, I do see some flags out here. Um, so I'll send it back to you. I believe we have at least a couple questions to ask right now. Yeah, 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 you right. I'm over here like, the question we have to ask is about his strategy. No, the question we have to ask is uh, what costume is our Zeromas wearing tonight? And we don't move him around. He doesn't get slotted into Antlion Cave. You don't get to run across a Big Bang that way. Uh, so Zeroma stays put, but he, he gets snazzed up quite a bit. So the important question we have to ask as these crystals are thrown is whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Corollary to that, what ice cream is Zeromas having tonight? I actually have half of a little vanilla sundae in my freezer. I may have to go have a spoonful after this. <laughs> the uh, the no over the twin harp is pretty uh pretty cute. Yeah, I mean, uh, Simbu, no, known Twin Heart Fader here, does uh, directly nerf uh, Big Bang with that first nuke here. And oh, oh no, uh, it went on to Tella. Tella fulfilling a very important duty, but we do see this Young fully zerked up, uh, definitely suggesting this is going to be hybrid strats. Uh, given how long it'll be till a like, black hole comes out, you're probably going to tip just on that strength alone. Yeah, especially with the supporting nukes and whites coming out here. I mean, that's uh, that's two straight nukes that Palom has already thrown. The white's starting to charge here. And I believe that was three punches Yang has thrown. So roughly about 20-some, uh, uh, about uh, nearly 30,000 damage already coming out right before that first Big Bang. I do really like how this tournament has really let nearly every character in the game shine. Uh, stage one, during the group stage, we saw so much power contained in Cecil and Fu. Big, strong Holy Swords just chewing through uh, Zeromus with Zerkitude. Uh, and then here, we see a lot more of the mage parties showing their value. Uh, doing hybrid strats, doing reflect strats, things of, of that nature. Uh, it's cool to see so much party representation. In, uh, in Free Enterprise's turning. Speaking of things you love, hate to see, that's a CPU on the Odin throne. Uh, just Meteo and Zerk. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's fine. exactly what Kyros is doing. The, the swag is being charged. Berserk is being thrown onto the yacht. And, uh, yeah. The Meteo will do quad nines here, of course. And then it's just, uh, do you get through the remaining 8,000 HP or so in time? It's, uh, three punches from Yong, unless, uh... Oh, there goes the defense node, so that first hit's gonna stick. Uh, I guess it just kind of depends on what Yong punches from here. And, uh, nope, there goes the attacker node, so we're waiting on Meteo here. There it is. And we're waiting on Meteo on the other side, too. Big Bang coming out on Simbu's team. Everybody lives. Has enough HP left on this team, I think, but rocks are falling. Both kids below 1,000 HP. Is Jean gonna have to do this solo? No, but that nuke is lost its reflect target, so uh, no nuke coming out there. So we just did see the tip. Yong's still doing uh, about that 
May only need one more punch to send this home, and there it goes. That is the flash. GG's to Simbu, taking game one of this best of three. Just wonderfully executed start to finish. Uh, we'll see if he would like to come in for an interview in just a moment, Jeff. Gotcha. Uh, the voice of God, uh, <laughs> our restreamer Scala Kitty, has informed us. Uh, no interview from Simbu tonight. Uh, he has another obligation to go attend to, but get your GGs out. Make sure you give both these runners a follow. They've both been kicking butt this tournament, and it's been real fun to see. So real quick, let's uh, go see while uh, I think Kyrgios did find the rat tail there uh, through Baron here. Let's actually dig through the signups here and see if we can find... Ah, yes! Uh, no, wait, that's today. That's Wednesday. Uh, let's see. Do we have a Game 2 scheduled between these two yet? Rattail gives Zeus gauntlets. I guess you don't reset out of that. Yang will love to wear those for the duration of your seat. Okay, yes, game two between these two here while we are, while Kyrgios is making these checks and uh, gonna be real sad heading to the moon, unfortunately, here. Game two is scheduled for 9 p.m. Or is that 9.30 p.m.? Okay, no, 9 p.m. Eastern will be uh, Friday. Game two between, uh... oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. No, 8 p.m. Kyrgios is there. Ah, uh, I can read, everybody. Reading, telling time, doing math, these things are all forbidden on, on Restream Duty, right? <laughs> At the very least, math, but uh, yes, even telling some sorts of time there. Uh, we, we are never late. We are here when we are expect, uh, uh, when we arrive, yes. And of course, we know at this point, uh, it, you, your, your headcanon was incorrect. This is going to be the Magma Key at Dwarf Castle. I, I think this is probably my least favorite item to get at Dwarf Castle. It feels like such a mockery after you sit through all the cutscenes and the two fights. Yeah, definitely a mockery. About the only thing I like after that is, you know, especially like if I have a if I have a palum, I've just like thrown like one siren at just to get the quake there. I'm I'm happy for about the uh, the forty thousand XP. Now the mockery here is I believe that's either Ogopogo or Wyvern here at this first slot. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Now, if this nuke does not one-shot, I believe that Porum will die to the counter blaze. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be about 1,500 total on a 1,362, and um, the, the forbidden math has been done. Okay, who <laughs> made it? <laughs> uh, uh, that would have killed the Yang as well. Yeah. That was yeah, real close. 600 some HP to spare. He was fine. <laughs> And actually, we do know that this is Valvolus here in a, uh, in a, thankfully, for at least for this party, well, Yong's still alive, but uh, again, thankfully for most parties here, uh, but what about second Yong? Um, but yeah, you can uh, totally hit her with magic here in the second spot of Dwarf Castle. Yep, no magic evade here. Palum will <laughs> one-shot her and then some. So, Kyrgios' shoes here, you probably do go straight for your moon altar when you go there. And uh, I, I see little reason to not then immediately follow it up with the, the lunar altar. Yeah, would, uh, and then it's going to have to walk back as, uh, again, uh, the pass. I mean, I can't really, I, I can't really fault the routing here as, uh, again, we just uh, had an incredibly fast go mode, I mean, but I mean, uh, again, can't route that, but can't route, uh, can't fault Simu either, who cleared the entire moon, and, uh, again, you did Sue say do your objectives there, but after the objectives were done, um, after that, just commit to that moon play that you did, and, uh, you know, while, while Luca did not have the goods, um, I mean, the tower was the next, uh, kind of the next check in line there, so, yeah, um, uh, just extremely well routed by Simu there. Oh, yeah. And of course, the very generous moon helping as well. But I, I do. I'm very curious of what you think when you see freebie three, three, essentially three freebies in a row. Or a Samuel altar. Eh, not too bad. But the two in the giant, followed by the King Queen Evelyn, just all of that free XP. Uh, I, I wonder if he was at all nervous during any of that once he saw what was in front of him. Oh, very much so, and 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 again, I mean, I'm I'm kind of looking to a uh, 
Uh, I'm kind of looking to a parallel universe where, yes, the giant was done, but there were two absolutely free fights there. But, you know, in the uh, in the alternate reality that one of these two actually went up Zot, picked up both the cane and the edge, and uh, took an entirely different uh, route through the seed. Healing the team up, making sure we're topped off. And onward and downward into the subterrain we go. Uh, help me out, who was the fight at the Murasame altar? I remember all the freebies, that one's escaping me. I believe it was... Was it Dark Elf? No, no, it wasn't Dark Elf. Maybe it yeah. was... No, it was Plague, that's it, that's right. It was Plague. Plague! Okay, no, okay, then yeah, that is... Sorry, when I said three... No, all four freebies in a row, four of them. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, chat. Uh, uh, so yeah, Plague here, Dark Elf, relatively free, just... A remarkably easy battery of bosses to, to manage. Yep, and again, it's going to do the same thing here with uh, with the power overwhelming that Kyrios does have. Um, walls, we don't need no stinking walls. We just need to throw a white nuke and uh, add some punches in there. And, uh, and and guess what? Like, we'll not be long for this world here. And did find Bacchus wine. Where did we find Bacchus wine at? I, I mean, I, I know Yong's the only one going for it right now, but... We see the wine going off. That should guarantee that the team does not drop due to uh, due to the timers running out, if we even reach that point. Though Holy's delay can kind of cause a problem, but no. <laughs> Goodbye, Blake. A couple nukes and a Holy already going off, with uh, Young already just, uh, throwing in a couple punches there. Uh, that does claim Holy Sword, uh, does say, uh, huh, yeah, this this was useful uh, about four weeks ago. Now, we'll note that Kyrios does have 10 key items at this point, so all these Lunar Altars, which probably just one more Lunar Altar, are going to be giving so much XP. These levels are going to be going even more through the roof. Yeah, his exiting and putting up a save. Uh, oh, going to, going to actually go check K-Value. Um, so is actually going to be spared the walk here. Um, and I don't believe there was anything really rude here at K-Value either, now that I think about it. Yeah, this is actually real nice uh, for for Kyrios, just uh, not having to walk the moon twice. You may have to fly your well back and forth a couple times between the caves, but pass here is just okay. Yeah. Oh yes, it was Odin, and uh, again, went the uh, power overwhelming here. Even if he does uh, take a page from uh, the fight he did with Simbu and just uh, attack the Quake Kid mercilessly, uh, still will not be a problem. Nukes coming out. Now, poor him, kind of low HP here. And yeah, that might be a little bad. Let's see what we're going to do here. More wine. More wine is the answer to everything. Bacchus wine, the cause of and solution to all of the seeds' problems. <laughs> it did raise that sword pretty quick, but again, even at. 3,500, Young might actually just straight up, uh, if he does get to the Zentetsuken uh, part of this fight here, uh, might just still be able to take it at that uh, amount of hit points, and here it comes, and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never mind, everybody would have looked through that except for it, but, uh... Yeah. Mega Nuke is so strong that the Bahamut spot does not require all that much, uh... all that much power to knock it out. Yeah, you can definitely think, because I believe Mega Nuke out there still comes out for... Uh, I mean, I know it has a wild variance, as a couple of seeds have taught me uh, with the uh, that, but uh, again, even with the wild variance, generally, I think Mega Nuke still comes out to around four to 5,000 at that spot. If I memory serves. Back 
to the main Crystal Palace. Uh, again, two items at the D Lunar spot. So we'll see if Kyrios goes for density or tries to think, huh, Simbu was done 10 minutes ago. Wonder how he might have routed. Uh, of course, the big culprit, I think, is the uh, the triple whammy rabbit hole of Magnus and Zot and Baron. Yeah, that is uh, that definitely has to do with uh, the uh, 11 minutes and change that have gone by here. Yeah, that's uh, those checks will absolutely swallow it up. You even throw a rat tail uh, check in there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, about the only thing, uh, I mean, oh yeah, and Dwarf Castle. Can't forget Dwarf Castle. That happened too. And uh, it's about uh, about the only key item that Kyrios will not see here is the spoon that was on the Crystal Sword Altar. Unless, uh, again, unless Kyrios does uh, wander over there saying, well, I'm going to do a full true top down here. Luckily, though, of course, did get that pass only having to walk the moon one time. And let us see the route. Of course, turning left down here, the big way to mix things up. Uh, going to the Wyvern Altar first if you wanted to, but not going to see that. Going right for the density, this is a good thing. Yeah, um, usually the only time I see myself turning left is when I A, think I am really, really far behind and need to make a Campbell, or B, I'm playing vanilla, vanilla and really want that Crystal Sword anyway. And it is going to... to... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yep. uh, no, he's saying the same thing I was. Going to that white spear and uh, finding just a, just a dark elf. Dark Elf here. The biggest threat is not getting a heal up between the week and the next round of spells. We do get the me change, so now it'll be vulnerable to our own weak spells and stop spells. And even then, I will say the most annoying thing about uh, Dark Elf's first form is the fact that he almost always seems to know what your Berserk target is. And it even sorts holy. Uh, but we'll uh, drop that piggy right on your Berserk target every time. Every time. Or sometimes your white mage when you're trying to get your uh, trying to get your heal up after the weak spell comes out. It's like let me heal, let me heal. Yo, you're not healing. You're a piggy. Okay. And of course, Dark Elf showing the cute little thing about the absorb status there and being super weak to things. Uh, absorbs holy magic, but takes bonus damage from holy physical attacks. Uh, weird, weird elf game is well programmed everybody I mean it really is <laughs> uh, I mean compared to some other things that were uh, released in this uh, day and age it actually is kind of actually well programmed uh, just just with a few glaring things uh, uh, I tell people like man I remember this being a lot harder yeah it was like it was a lot harder before I figured out that reflect broke the game yeah just uh, giving given you know well over 20 years of, oh my gosh, given nearly 30 years of so many of us playing and loving the game and experimenting and trying things out and just discovering, oh, oh, and new discoveries being made all the time in the randomizer community. It's really fun. I'm a fan. What keeps us coming back sometimes? Speaking of O oh, moments, we're about to get one here as uh, Kyrios does kick up another, uh, you know, 
that, that Yon is gonna have like 5,600 hit points now. It does pick up the package, does say, huh, that's where everything was. Uh, heading back to Earth, uh, again, nice to have that pass now, um, but uh, yeah, is uh, unfortunately just got really dunked behind that giant rabbit hole on Earth, unfortunately. Yeah, it's one of those things, and this is something that we've seen lots of tournaments before as well, where you have the Earth-Moon dichotomy. Uh, lots of earlier tournaments before the objective system was implemented, it really came down to that for so many people. You get moon access, are you going to finish off the blue planet, or are you going to go right for the moon and get your XP, get all those altars cleared at once, and, you know, in the days when you could just get your crystal there, uh, are you going to walk directly to Zeromus immediately afterwards? So uh, seeing that come into play tonight, it, it is just part of how rando randos. Sometimes you say, I'm doing Earth. Sometimes you say, I'm doing Moon. And well, it can bite you either direction. It just happened to bite Kyrios tonight. Yep, and uh, as we see, Mist being burned down once again for our amusement. Uh, seriously, will we uh, will we stop terrorizing this poor village? <laughs> there we go. Curios gets the crystal. Has a little more cutscene to go through, but not much. Has the pass. Has the power. Curios' aromas is going to be in for a real bad time. Yeah, it's definitely a little more interesting, um, especially here where. Uh, uh, again, the dichotomy between group and bracket stages, where most of the time we just, you know, ran in, usually with a, usually with a holy sword wielding paladin that uh, pretty much assured that Zeromus was going to have a bad day. Um, here we have had a couple more uh, interesting fights, but um, I, I mean, even then, we're taking a lot of mage strategies to Zeromus, which uh, honestly, you know, you bring in like two noob casters and maybe a white there, and. Uh, it, it is definitely, while sometimes a little uh, harder to get it online, or a little longer to get it online there, that uh, mage strategies do generally tend to just uh, just tend to clip Zeromus a whole lot faster than a Berserk strategy. These will. And here we go. Changing the party order just a little bit here. Coming in, moving battle speed over to three. I wonder if that does signal that it's going to be a little bit of a different Zeromus fight, having maybe uh, what we discussed the first time, just going to have Yong chip in with a few early punches and then just let the uh, casters handle the rest of it. Yeah, just to be clear, Chad, if you're unfamiliar with the Zeromus fight, uh, any direct damage done to him that puts him past the 45,000 uh, HP mark, damage mark, whichever way you want to call it, uh, causes an immediate refill and switches to the next phase of the fight. So if you go all the way from 45,000 to 61,000, it's total HP, without doing direct damage, uh, except on the final hit, you can direct damage on the final hit, uh, you'll kill and just have half the HP. And that's kind of the foundation of Reflect Strats. Uh, no reflected damage will activate that, uh, that refill, uh, but you can chip in with your, with your physical fighters and direct damage up to the 45k mark. Yeah, it's just one of those things where you know, if I'm at uh, if I'm at 38, uh, I mean, or you know, even like 40, do I do I chance just throwing it out there, maybe get a bad crit? Uh, yeah, it's just the one thing where you really just don't want to tip him over there and uh, you know, double the life of your fight there. Rydia throwing the crystal. Which oh, one did Porum get queued up there? Uh, Porum cast, direct casted a wall onto Yong here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Curios appear. That makes a lot of sense. Yong has your the the large pool of HP. You know that your Yong can get hit by a nerf Big Bang and a bunch of other stuff and still be fine. You want to be able to refill the HP on your other two. Well, or you could also just wall up your other two so they can't yep. eat a counter nuke anyway. Yep. Either or, it depends on if you think you're going to need to cast Cure 4 multiple times in the fight, or if you think I have the damage and the, the setup to never have to heal my kids at all. 
It goes both ways, just depending on your comfort level. And then I'm wrong because Young is chugging a Bacchus anyway, so um, we're, we're back to hybrid. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Again, this Young will never need to be healed this fight. Not a single time. And this just means Kyrgios knows I can heal both my children, and we will have a very safe, not a problem, this Aromas fight. Reflected nukes and holies coming out. Dong punching for over 4,000 a pop himself. Yeah, that Palamoporum there just uh, it took next to nothing from that second or that first big bang there. Uh, could, could conceivably, with a good amount of evade rolls on both of them, could conceivably both actually survive an under big bang at that point. Uh, a little less likely in forum situation, but I have seen uh, kind of low rolls in their situation as well. Yep, we do see a multi-target Cure 4 coming out though. Uh, just to top them off, again, you've... Your team is strong. Don't give Zeromas the opportunity to, uh, to cause you problems. That Cure 4 is just going to be uh, undone by a punch anyway there. So yeah, this is, it's, it's a little more safe, but um, yeah, it will uh, get you there pretty much without fail. More Reflected Spells coming out. We do see a Shake indicating a new Big Bang is being queued up. Uh, although I don't think Kyrios has time now to do a direct nuke to nerf it, so we will be seeing a full powered one. Uh, Kyrios' kids, not as well as equipped as Simbu's were. Let's see how they endure this uh, if the boss does manage to get it cast. The, the gigantic pools of HP should, uh, should at the very least see Palum through and has a pretty good chance of. Uh... Uh, seeing forum through still uh still that big bang could come up with uh w with about 2400 here uh but uh nah, just in the 14 to 1600s there everybody's fine uh hey, you know could could be a mambo combo territory with a meteor coming out but that then would just be in the same exact position that uh, simba was with, with a very angry punch mage uh totally ready and able to finish off never mind that's the last nuke uh down goes romus gg GG's to Kyrios, hung in there, got rabbit hold, still beating any bracket seed uh, at this speed. Very impressively done. Uh, we will see if Kyrios wants to come in for an interview and talk about that seed a little bit. We are that... mapping by Kyrios. Uh, GG, sir. Uh, sure, GG. It was a bit of an unfortunate one, but still a fun race. Yeah, the it, you just got bitten by Rando. Uh, opponent went moon, you stayed in Earth. And, you know, it's the classic coin flip of Free Enterprise. It happens to all of us at some point. Uh, yep. The bigger question I have for you, though, is after you did your D-Machine grind, seeing two relatively free bosses in the Giant, were you worried uh, that maybe D-Machine had not been the right play? Or were you just happy to have all your levels regardless of who was in front of you? So I was happy to be online. I mean, there's always that chance it's not going to be the right play. Uh, the biggest piece, I think I left Earth Crystal, and of course that led to an edge, so there's some other path to the seed where you do that early, you get the edge, and it all ends up being quite a bit quicker than the D-Machine. I wasn't, honestly, at that point, I was more annoyed that I bled probably six minutes on execution in the first hour that I didn't feel great about, but it turns out that I probably lost 20 minutes on routing after that anyway, so it ended up not mattering. Just a very nasty start to the seed. Uh, what was... What were your thoughts? What were you trying to do to get your party rolling, to get your team online with so many nasty options in the early game with a very weak team? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was hoping to find a character somewhere that would kind of push it, and I saw the Palum, and I was really hopeful, but of course, at that point, that second fight has to be something on the freer side because Yang's your only damage in the front row and that one hits. Uh, and of course, it was not, so then it was like, what can I piece together? that will really let me accelerate into the seed and getting the Porum kind of just enough. I 
I went and got the Eddie, honestly, for targets and a little experience as much as anything. I think that's probably a waste of time, but it certainly made it a little safer. But definitely as soon as I saw the Darkness Crystal, it's like, okay, this is a path I can take that is a little conservative maybe, but it's definitely going to work out and it's definitely going to make the back half of the seed just as fast as I can find the items. Nice. Uh, Night do. your thoughts, your questions. Um, the only thing I can really think of here right now is, um, again, the major divergence was at that point between Moon and Earth. What was the driving force that said, I, I do have real ultimate power, I could clear this Moon, but I'm going to jump underground. Was it kind of figuring that uh, Simu might do the same thing, or was it uh, any other idea that you had in your head it between was a uh, just... Oh, it sorry, was a little bit of that, and it was a little bit just the one objective on the moon um, and no early pass, so they're, given that once you get underground with the two required Fey March bosses, that's a bunch of stuff to check right away, so with the relatively low number of required key items, there's a pathway where you get that all pretty quickly and you go to the moon, do the Mirasame altar, and just swag walk your way down with a fully leveled party, so it didn't work out that way, but I, I don't actually feel too bad about that routing decision. I mean, it's like you said, it's Earth versus Moon. It can kind of go either way there. You feel bad about it when you walk into the ribbon room and it's absolutely free and then the last item is right there. Yeah, we were we were really thinking about that. I'm like, I'm kind of just hoping for your sake, you know, like Baron was like, you know, behind the Luka key, which was also up there, um, which also ended up just being a Dragoon Spear. But um, yeah, it just kind of fell into the whole thing where like the last text you did, unfortunately, just opened up that really large yawning rabbit hole that unfortunately you did end up falling into. Yeah, and I mean, the rabbit hole routed all nicely together there too, right? Twin Harp, Earth Crystal, Baron. Nice it was too moon. perfect. It was too perfect for you. That was it. It, it was so painful to see because it's like, oh no, it's the trifecta. It's all three right there in a row. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but still, beautifully played, start to finish, just clearing so much of that seed and knocking it out in the time you did, losing the coin flip, but still wonderfully played. Uh, when is your game number two versus Simpic? Uh, we are playing Friday night at eight p.m. Eastern. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, we're looking forward to it. Do you have any final thoughts on that seed that we didn't really cover tonight? No, I mean, I think you saw pretty much all of it. I just want to thank the team, Scala, of course, for doing the admin work and getting our seed going, Groundflyer for tracking, Inven and Nightdew, both of you guys for commentary. I'm going to go watch this back after, and I'm sure it'll be a great time. So thanks, everyone. Hey, GG's again, Curious. Well done. Thank you. Have a great night. Nightdew, what are we doing tonight, buddy? Well, other than taking over the world, um, oh no, that's 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 another uh, duo there. I believe we are kicking things over to uh, Free Enterprise. I believe uh, uh, Possum Morpheus and Wu Bear in progress right now. Uh, just a reminder here to uh, no spoilers for this match and uh, any other matches that we've seen here. And um, uh, again, a huge shout out to Scala for uh, rolling that wonderful rabbit hole. Groundfire on the tracking here. And uh, again, this is what our third time uh, in the Adamant Cup uh, on comms together. Maybe uh, do it one more time before uh, we close out. Hey, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yep, uh, that's the raid coming up right there. So again, one more uh, uh, say, uh, no spoilers, and we will uh, see you over on uh, Free Enterprise, uh, and then Free Enterprise 2, and roughly is going to start also in about 20-ish uh, minutes there. So. Uh, uh, again, uh, plenty more free enterprise for us tonight. Uh, so again, uh, good night, everybody, and uh, have a great evening. Good night, y'all.